Andy, how are you feeling this morning? Cut the cow. Excellent. I feel like I slept all night. Ready to kill an elk? What do you, what do you, you want something profound? Like yeah, a profound about how you're gonna shoot that goofy ball. You guys are. You guys have reported all kinds of elk and stuff. I haven't seen any of these big ones or goofy ones you're talking about. I'm just mostly here for, I guess, because you guys felt obligated to drag my bag of bones up here. But really, I'm thinking that Lucas is going to shoot an elk. I'm going to give detailed instructions to do this, do that. My wife says that when I get in the heat of the moment, I'm the worst instruction. What would you say, instructor? I was going to say instruction giver in the world. So disregard everything I say, Lucas. I think, I think I was, I'm, I'm still planning on listening intently. Okay. And just remember to disregard what you listen to. <laughs> and Bo, he's going over there. He's going to find Big Hank. He's, he's off and running already. He needs to get going. He's going about four miles away from us. What are you thinking, camera guy? I he, think at least two elk are going to hit the ground today. I don't know. And I hope it's two of you guys. I, 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 <laughs> good All luck, Bo. Okay, guys, we'll see you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now's the time. Today's the day. Today's the day. Bo couldn't take it. Him and Marcus left about midnight. Or maybe not midnight. Or whatever. They, those guys are just in too big of a hurry. We're just going to ease on up here a couple miles and we're going to kill one. They're like four miles out there. They'll probably kill one. But they're going to be cold standing out there <laughs> waiting for the sun to come up. Well, it's opening day, folks. We got about an hour until the sun's up. We'll see it happens. Follow along.
check the clock. We got two minutes. That's a six point. We shot him like seconds after the, the clock went off. Wow. There he is. I don't know if I had to whisper anymore. <sighs> you don't know how excited I am for elk meat in the freezer. It's pretty awesome. Sometimes you just get really, really lucky. We got lucky this morning. I feel blessed. I hope Randy and Lucas see some, and hopefully it'd be cool if they got one too. <laughs> what a cool bull. Look how, look how much mass he has right here. Looks like he broke it. See how it's not even? I'm so pumped up. I'm a little bit shocked at how amazing they are. You know, I, every time I see one, I just can't believe it. 
Man, he's a big old, <laughs> he's a big old body dog. This is the best. I'm so excited right now. I feel like it happened so fast, we should keep, we should still be hunting. But for me, the hunt's over. Don't tell my wife, she'll want me home early. <laughs> Well, this is the way they do it in Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been dreaming about doing it this way for a couple seasons now. So I was like, this now is the perfect time where I'm not in a rush, you know? Try to learn something new. And there's an elk this side of that string of dark timber that's just off the other side. Coming this way. Here comes another one. another elk coming up way from where they came from. Way behind them? Yeah. Oh yeah. That one, the ball. That's a good ball. Okay. I just, if you aren't shooting that one, I am. Uh, you're rolling. So we've got a cow. A spike and a nice branch antler bull about a mile out here. And they're coming up. We're gonna drop down, get out of the way, and cut them off, hopefully. Because right now they're gonna be down in a little gulch for the next 10 minutes. We're gonna have to get down here and get to this point of trees before the sun comes up. That's a really nice bull. There's eight. There's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that looks all that. It might be a little bit bigger. They're all looking up to the right there. They're on alert. I see a hunter coming up that ridge over there. There's a hunter right there. I think they see him. There they go. Dang it. There must be something they smell or see over to their right. Just before we were going to commit, they stopped and they smelled something off to their east. And now they whirled and did a 180, or maybe a 270. And now they're going back downhill into the firing squad. Oh well. I'm just glad we didn't drop down here while they were there because we were popped up and said what happened. I think we're going to get back up to our glassing knob here and keep looking around. Give ourselves more options to this side or that side. Bo, oh, when you rent llamas, you got to ask people, where are you going? And don't let them come to where you're going. Well, when you hunt public land, general units over the counter tags in Montana expect some hunting pressure. There's one guy there, one guy here, one guy here, one guy there, and two up there. Just in this little angle, I can see six guys down below us. <laughs> that hit. Whatever shot that was. Ah. Oh.
Oh, slick head, he said. Huh? Cow. Oh, he was that. We're just gonna sit here. There's enough people down below us. We've got the elevation on all of them. So, hopefully, we'll luck out and one of them will come through one of these pinch points and Lucas will shoot them. All right, folks, <laughs> our elk is cut up, processed. We got the heart, we got the tongue, we brought the testicles out. We're gonna try those tonight. And uh, it's awesome. Really, really heavy cord, there's tons of meat on it and had some good fat on his back. So yeah, just an incredible elk. It's been an awesome hunt so far. And uh, now we're gonna go back, grab the llamas, check on Randy and the guys and see how they did. And uh, grab Marcus, the public land llama, and bring him over here to pack out an elk. Tokyo, what are you doing? Well, we got some heavy elk quarters we're gonna hang up in a tree here to keep away from the bears. So we're gonna try to be 10 feet up four feet away from the trunk of the tree and four feet from where we're gonna be hanging it from. Got some some uh, rescue pulleys. Get these little little hummers off of uh, Amazon for 17 bucks. They're really, really incredible. The mechanical advantage that it gives you is pretty impressive. So, we just gotta get to it here. We've got three llamas. Really don't need three, but uh, we figure, hey, if we run into Randy, we might need to pack out one of his elk or something. So we got Marcus, the Publix Land Llama. Then we have James, King James, LeBron James is his name. And then we have Tokyo. So uh, Marcus and Tokyo are good friends. And um, James has never packed out an elk before. Marcus has never packed out an elk before. And Tokyo's a veteran, so he's going to teach these two, two youngsters how to do it. Get all the panniers ready. Weigh all this. Weigh all the quarters out. Let's see what we got as far as weight goes. We're gonna put the horns on Marcus, Publix Land Llama, and uh, thanks to Loophole, Onyx Maps, and Randy Newberg for uh, sponsoring Marcus. Now he's out here packing elk, loving life. So we got some electrical tape, trekking pole. I'm gonna set it across the horns and. That way he can pack it out with ease. <laughs> James, we're about to see what you're made of, dude. If you're made of steel or if you're made of butter. All right, we got the horns on Marcus. Back straps, some extra meat. And now we uh, got the rest of the meat on the other two boys. So we're going to head on out of here. All in all, it's like 298 pounds it looks like a total of meat and horns and cape no cape <laughs> basically 300 pounds were taken out today this is marcus's first time packing out an elk he looks like he's ready to get moving so we'll see how he does come on buddy Hike up there and show them what we got, huh? I'll be like Kirk Cousins, the Vikings quarterback. <sighs> if you're a Vikings fan, I mean, he's a good quarterback, but that was the lamest touchdown dance on the planet. Kirk. Just sit down, act like you hurt your ankle so you don't have to dance, okay? And if this was your first day of elk hunting, say you were new to the sport and you were sitting right where I am, you'd look around and say, well, no wonder I didn't kill anything. I don't have a llama with me. 
Only people we've seen with dead elk are guys who have llamas. Bo, who's with us, he rented some llamas, two llamas, to a guy over here who's got an elk down way, way over there. And it looks like a cow. I can't tell for sure, either or a really young bull. And then Bo is coming down the ridge here behind us with his three llamas and an elk on it. Just saying. Make of it what you want. There's probably 30 hunters on this mountain. And the only two that have dead elk have llamas. Really glad I put my long johns back on. Glad I didn't take mine off. Michael, Mr. Camera Guy, spotted a group of nine elk over there. One bull and eight cows about, I don't know, at least two miles, maybe longer for, or further. With 15 minutes of sun left, we're not going to get there, I can assure you of that. But it does tell us that maybe tomorrow we want to go freeze our stones off by sitting on that ridge over there instead of this one be a mile closer anyhow. I think that's two and a half miles at least. You know what Lucas? Ten hours on this spot kept all the other hunters from sitting right here. Plan worked. <laughs> Boy I hope no one takes our spot tomorrow. I tell you what, <laughs> Lady Luck was not on our side today. Stay tuned. Tomorrow it's gonna get even better. Because we're going to go and get the full report from Bo Beatty, the llama man, the llama whisperer, the myth, the legend, Bo Beatty. <laughs> That is awesome. Great job, Bo Beatty. <laughs> cool looking ball for sure. Did you guys shoot him like right in the morning? I mean, it didn't take, it wasn't like the first second of season, but it was like the third second of season. Really? 